Today, we're going to make nickel acetate. We're going to need a plastic or glass container and about 12 litres of vinegar, to which you'll add about 3 tablespoons of salt. Next, we're going to suspend two nickel plates into the solution. One will be the sacrificial anode and the other one will act as a cathode. Opening the bag containing the wire to suspend the nickel was the toughest part of this project. It was a tough bag. Now connect 12 volts positive to one end and negative to the other end. It does not matter which one is which at this point, but if you see bubbles coming off one of the plates, then you know that it's all working. Over about eight hours, the nickel acetate slowly becomes a darker green as more nickel ions are suspended in the solution. This solution should keep indefinitely provided it is stored correctly. In practice, however, you will consume acetate over time as it is used for more projects. And this will be through either evaporation, uh, the coating loss, or through filtering as contaminants are introduced through use. The acetic acid and salt solution is conductive, however there is still some resistance to currents flow. As the terminals are brought closer together, the resistance to flow decreases and the current amps increases. This is a good thing when making acetate, however it will work against you when you are plating. Here is a sample of a bolt that was nickel plated using this acetate. I'll demonstrate the plating process in a future video. You will notice that there is a textured finish on the bolt. And this can be rubbed back if you want to get a mirror finish. It's worthwhile noting that not all metal objects will plate the same. There are a significant number of well documented adhesion problems. However, the majority of these deal with the base metal composition. I found that the purer the iron, the better the result. 